Hi, everybody. So Hello. today, Julianne and I are going to be doing the audience question video. And we are taking coffee donations below. And that gets you a chance to win an appointment with me, which I'm not doing anymore. Like you can't schedule one on the website anymore. So that's kind of the only way to individually see me. And then also Diane, who's a great hypnotist and Sally Ann, who is also a great astrologer. Um, they're also part of that mix of winning. Mm -hmm. So you can win appointments with any one of the three of us. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I want to bring up today. I want to say thank you for all the great donations lately. It's been beautiful. Um, and we really appreciate you guys. So, okay. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> pardon me. We'll get started. The first one is from Karen. And she's basically, she's asked for, you know, in communication for years and still doesn't seem to get any clear message on what her purpose here at this time would be or where she's from, her soul tribe type of thing. Do you okay. have any input on that? She's going to do something with kids, it feels like, um, in the interim before she kind of creates something really fun for herself. Um, I feel like the kids will still be involved in that fun thing that she creates. It almost feels like um, something with nature, gardening, um, learning, exploring beauty, mm -hmm. you know, so the kids get to kind of see the aha of nature Perfect. um she has creativity that she hasn't tapped into yet so definitely allow yourself that time to tap into that i think it's going to be really fun for you and everybody around you kind of like thinking of the inner child right yeah really start yeah, to deal with your inner child soul child um, do you get soul tribe mm -hmm. wise? Do you get soul tribe wise what she's? Pleiadian. Um, as far as ET, the ET connection. So fifth density. Uh, I mean, her soul tribe will show up for her. That's who's above her is a Pleiadian ship, a small one. Um, I feel mm -hmm. like she's also had a lot of elven stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she's actually got a lot of cool things going on. She's not acknowledging them very well though. Like, so start to pay attention to who you are. Right. You have a lot more gifts than you think you do. Yeah. So yeah, that's fun. Maybe just find a way to have less stress about it and let it go and let it come in you know and maybe you're you're kind of in your own way which yeah. some of us tend to do. a lot yes. of us do that so well good luck with that karen it sounds like you have some magical yeah, have fun um, energies mm -hmm. i'm gonna go to lisa and she says um i would like to know is there a healing technology that would help her daughter get sober evidently her daughter's been an alcoholic for 20 years They've been through an awful lot. I don't know of an actual tech. I mean, I'm sure any frequency thing would help. Um, one thing, and I'm not a doctor, but one thing that tends to drive urges is parasites. So I would think about that and look into that. And then I think it's L-glutamine that helps with urges for things so basically I know that yeah look that up as well i've seen that with like even like eating or sugars or sweets and stuff yeah and smoking as well you um, can get that in a powder form i think that's what they're talking yeah, about just put it in some water and drink it um, or i even saw on a tiktok where you just put it on your finger and i think it was you put it on your gums or because it's absorbed and things are absorbed sublingually or under your tongue right easily too yeah, pretty instantly yeah so think about that see if that will work it mm -hmm. is psychological but also it's physical so there's like two factors that need to be dealt with yeah plus um <clears throat> i don't you know where she is at or in her life as far as um 
who she hangs out with and where she's at and stuff is a big part of it too. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Because they don't call it spirits for nothing. And basically that kind of um, beverage, beverages the spirits, um, just open doorways and leave you susceptible to some very um, negative things. So yeah, that's something to consider. All right. Well, Lisa, good luck with that. It'll be a, yeah. it'll be a process. It will be um, a process, gonna, yeah. Margarita or Margareta. Um, she says, I felt for a long time that I'm being watched. I even had a dream once where a man in khaki shorts was squatting down from the top of some planks or beams of an unfinished house. He was just peering down. And I told my brother-in-law, uh, see, he's watching. And um, so the question I am being, am I being watched or, or am I just being paranoid? You have a certain energy that a lot of people are attracted to and they are mm. watching. Mm. Um, is there anything else, anything big? There is a group that's watching you quite a bit. Um, so they're doing it through the eyes of others. Interesting. Almost like people that are more like susceptible to that, like open to being, you know, to having their eyes be used by someone else. Hmm. Who are these people? It's a certain ET race. Um, they're not nefarious. This is Just some curious. kind of skill that they've learned and very few ET races have it. Hmm. Um, they didn't want to interfere with your body. So what they do is they like see through others' eyes as you're, they're tracking you, making sure that you're okay. So you are a part of this group. Um, so hmm. don't feel like it's negative because yeah. most of the time it's not negative. But you do have a certain energy as well where people are like attracted to looking at you, trying to figure you out, you know, so I would, you know, temper that like you don't want somebody yelling and saying, hey, hey, lady, you know, or whatever they're doing. Um, avoid those people. <laughs> but if she's out in public or out and around and she notices people um, that are kind of had been looking at her that this is happening through various people that she's around during the day, right? Yeah. And so just, I, I don't know, just kind of feel like you're um, in your own personal reality show, I guess. <laughs> and just ask, ask them to be very respectful of, of when to watch you. Yeah, I would, you know, your ETs can hear you. Like this is a, a very ancient soul group. Mm -hmm. um, so ask them like yeah. listen you can see where i'm at it's fine but i don't want anybody staring at me it's creepy well or if i'm in my room you know what i mean i'm in the bathroom i'm showering i'm doing personal things please that's uh, they're that's not, off limits. they're not looking at her then okay yeah well i mean we don't know that we we think that everything is them <laughs> i know so, okay well <laughs> i guess the main thing is uh margarita is that it's it's not a bad thing. So yeah, it's not nefarious, even though it's a little right. weird. Yeah. <laughs> and we find a lot of that these days. There's a lot of strangeness. Yes. <laughs> we're we're going to go to Morgan, Morgan F. Uh, I saw a vision of a man coming toward me in a golden white, in a golden white light. I knew him somehow shoulder length, blondish brown hair, warm energy. He handed me an oblong shaped clear crystal quartz or quartz crystal i heard the word healing and put it to my heart space and then left who was he i think he was your archangel i kind of get Raphael, and i don't know all the archangel names so please excuse me but it's a healing archangel okay they're very into healing um but that's who i'm that's the name that's coming in mm-hmm she says, "My um, in finding my new mission from a young child, I've always wanted um, an animal to do animal rescue. Now I'm receiving images of a center for animals and children to learn together. Is this my future? Yeah. Always you know, trust I, your own stuff that's coming through to you. 
mm-hmm. um, especially if it's really good, like something that's good for you. If it's bad for you, then maybe it's somebody else trying to get into your head. But in general, mm-hmm. inside is best. Trust your own inside. Yeah. Did was she um she's been drawn to dragons when she was younger and um, not so much now, but was there um what did she used to be one or did she does she have one? I feel like she used to ride one a lot. Um I almost feel like she has this in a parallel universe right now. Like she's actually living two lives, you know, like she has this other life where she's doing that. Okay. She feels like a kid there. Like she's well, that would be a very fun, magical place to, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, is the Mississippi River really the Nile River and we've been misled? No. I don't okay. know. All right. Um, Argue. Yeah. I mean, they may have put some of the same spells on it as they did the Nile, but no. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Morgan, for those. Um, Teresa is um, her first question. About 15 years ago, she said she woke out of a deep sleep to droids hovering over her, three above um, one and three above and one on the wall next to her bed. They were square metal looking with fluorescent green and orange tentacles and had a viewing device. Yeah. She started demanding for them to leave because they didn't have permission and they still didn't leave. And so she had to flip the sheet and get a little bit more um, um, aggressive with that. And they finally scattered. Do, do you have any idea what those were or what was going on there? I feel like they came through from um, where she was. Like, I wonder if she had an abduction or something. That's kind of. So what I'm getting is she was being worked on um kind of in a healing way but also and she had made agreement to do so with the the ant the group that looks like ants um they're very very knowledgeable people are afraid of them because the way they look but actually they're very benevolent um and it's like that it's almost like those little things followed her back. Hmm. That's weird. It was like an observation, like they were trying to observe her after what they did. So I don't know if she had had some kind of childhood thing or they were preventing something. Mm -hmm. I feel like this had something to do with her mother as well. Um, So tap into any kind of issues your mom had. Okay. Yeah, but it was something that they were working on to help you and other people. Yeah. It's so a they lot weren't of that was various, weird. but they looked pretty weird. Uh, I mean, so a lot of that work that she agreed to was in the astral. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then she basically just says, you know, she's um for about eight months, she, you know, the ascension symptoms and stuff, sleeping a lot and whatnot. And um, then the process she's still, um, she feels she's in between and now shifting the cycles, um, getting dizzy, blurry eyes and stuff like that. So um, is it just basically she's trusting the process and that's Mm -hmm. part of her journey in the uh, going to crystalline and all that kind of stuff. It is part of it. I feel like there's a little like extra minerals are needed maybe and also extra detox. Okay. So I would, if you have something that's infrared, I would use that. If you don't, then I would do salt baths and stuff like that. Castor oil packs. Um, Just start to get some of the toxins releasing more. Because I'm just not seeing that they're coming out as easy as they should be. You know, that's, that's just one thing that is not that we don't know about that. We kind of forget, though. We get kind of stuck into our symptoms and we don't think about the logical things that we know about. So, yeah, I look at some things that are gentle first and see how you react. Yeah. And you can always see a naturopathic doctor, but I would say try those and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Simple, simple and very, you know, ineffective, but I mean, effectively cost wise, you know. 
Yeah. So good luck with that, Teresa. Mm -hmm. And thank you. we're going to go to Brenda. Okay. Um, she's um, in her early 70s. She is more reclusive and has always had a hard time understanding, you know, the competitions and the games that we do. And, you know, telling time isn't important, but, and she's always wanted to go home as she puts it. Um, she used to be, she thought she used to be able to fly because she used to jump up trying to take off. So I don't know if that was when she was younger. Um, and she had been told that she was maybe a multi, uh, multiple personality because witnesses would say that um, she would change voices and personality around them, but she had no memory of it. Um, plus being a, a sleepwalker, she'd have to put chairs, you know what I mean, to block the doors. Because, mm -hmm. So she wasn't outside in her nightgown and so forth. Um, someone said, maybe it was a healer or whatever, that that was um, a son from another life that was clinging on to her. Maybe they cleared it. She says she's not bothered with that. Do you get anything with that? Did yeah, have... there was an energy there for sure. Um, I, I can't remember all of that because that was a lot of information. I, well, I, she was kind of setting up like who she is and whatever. Okay. Uh -huh. um, do you see her in the future after all the things, you know, we, we ascend and so forth, being a successful, um, it looks like she likes to make bags as a bag maker, she says. Um yeah. She's obviously creative. Okay. Yeah, I do get that. Um, definitely continue to do it. And the more unique they are, the better is what mm -hmm. comes in. So is, is, um, is it more of a Palladian energy or some kind of a creative? Her energy feels like fairy energy to me. Fairy. Yeah. So yeah, she's very like, she has the clairs. Like all, oh, all squares. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes people are trying to talk through her. She's mm -hmm. pretty open. Mm -hmm. Um, so for her, establishing boundaries would be really good. Yeah, because she's talking about um <clears throat> when she was in grade school, she um used to experience a coat hanger that appeared at night with the sign that said, hang on. <laughs> I would grab it with one hand and it would take me up right through the roof. One time I watched my house getting smaller and I says, no, I will miss my mom and dad. And I let go and fell back down and the roof opened up and I hit my bed. My eyes opened and the bed was still bouncing a little. What was that? Wow. Was it just what I know. That was her light body. I don't get it was actually her body, but she came back into her body and like slammed back in. So she recognized so, and remembered. Yeah. It. So the, her body was like, and huh. it probably wasn't the nicest thing for her body, really. Wow. Um, she has one son who is like RH negative uh, blood, just like she is. But And she says after she had a hysterectomy, the doctor had said that she had had several pregnancies, but that she did not know about. Is that true? Or is that after the hysterectomy? Mm -hmm. I mean, like probably looking at, at the, you know. The, the, oh, the, looking at the, the, the doctor yeah. was telling her what he saw. Did she have she several? Nine. So was there some? She had nine. Because she just says she has one son. She hasn't talked about any other children. So was that something that was going on? I mean, like, how, how can that be? Or did she just miscarry them? Mostly miscarried. Without knowing, probably. Yeah, without knowing. Hmm two I think were taken um at a very young stage it's embryonic or yeah. yeah um let's find out what's going on there that feels really weird um these were not completely human these were hybrid children so if you need help after that conversation, I would definitely make an appointment with, um, I'll put some, uh, some people below. Um, cause that's kind of, uh, something that probably needs to be worked through. It's a big deal. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, she was, there was an instance where she was driving home in the wee hours. So, or, you know, and crossing a bridge, she glanced to the left out the driver window and saw the river like it was a boat in the, and she saw the river, like I was, like she was a boat in the middle of it. 
I looked back and saw that there was water in front of me. I floored it and my car went airborne and jumped over the water and landed on the other side. Later, I found out the bridge was out and a car drove into the river. Did someone save me? Um, she's always been afraid of water. Your fairies saved you. Um, she has some almost like angelic type fairies. Fifth mm -hmm. density fairies that hang out with her. Um, she's got a lot of magical energy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And she has tremendous knowledge that's going to be coming in. So yeah. It's important to get rid of, you know, to start letting go of trauma as well. I Which is say. kind of, yeah. That, that previous question needs to be dealt with probably. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're, if, I think that happens a lot more often than we know. people think. Yeah. Yeah. She did say she was, another time she was on a very long bridge with driving and it was an area where, um, that she had seen on Unsolved Mysteries, you know, the show where a ghost named Mary was often sighted walking. I think they called her Resurrection Mary. Mm. It was rush hour and the bridge was packed with traffic and my lane was stopped on the bridge. I started saying, Mary, Mary, quietly. You know, suddenly my whole windshield cracked and fell into little pieces around me and I had no windshield. Did I have a rock hit my windshield or was it Mary? It was Mary. Yeah, she doesn't like to be disrespected is what I'm getting. Oh, but, wow. Yeah. So the way you were singing it, she prompted it. But the way you were singing it made her mad, so she broke your windshield. She also <laughs> wanted you to realize her power. Like, that's big for her. That she's So Resurrection Mary is in that area, wherever it is, is really a thing. Yeah, I get it is. Yeah. So she just she feels kind of creepy, like kind of like uh maybe a black um magical person. I won't say the word. Right, uh, but maybe somebody that, that needs to go to the light. Yeah. She still hasn't she gone to the light. She needs to go into the light. I would say that is a job for more than one person that knows how to do that, actually. Okay. So She's if you have some part deep anger. Yeah. If you have any, if you end up having a session with anybody who's got experience with helping you in the other department, you can maybe ask about that one too, if there's somebody that can help with that. Because if that's a place that people are around a lot, that's probably not a good thing either. No. Wow, Brenda, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to go to Joan. Um, and she just basically has a one basic question. Can the dome over our area also be referred to as the firmament? Or in addition to the dome, is there a firmament over the entire entire top of the earth plane? There, that's, that's, is, a, there is a firmament over the entire top of the yeah. top of earth, um, yeah. which I have those pictures. Um, but the dome itself is pretty much gone at this point and we're basically we have a hologram yeah. so here's the that picture mm -hmm. so and it's all frequency based but the actual firmament is, is a different kind of density than space mm -hmm. so they do not mix so you can look at just look up the question, why does the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans not mix? And you're going to get some great images, and that's going to explain the firmament more about the firmament itself. Yeah. It's all pretty interesting, isn't it? It's, so, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Joan. Mm -hmm. um, there's Suzanne, who is from Quebec, Quebec, however you say that. Um, she asks about, is it true that we're going to have two, two sons, you know, in a binary um, system? But um, no, that's not it. But like right now, we are seeing the reflection of the true sun. Yeah. And we still have the old sun, which I yes. feel like is not doing very well right now. <laughs> well, the old sun, you know, remember when it was small and yellow? Mm -hmm. That was the 
sun that had been put up the first time. And then recently, because ascension was happening, they went and put up a reflection of the true sun. And that's how we're still getting our light codes so we can still go through ascension. Um, but I don't feel like the little yellow sun is doing very well anymore. Well, and I guess we're just going to see um, a lot of anomalies, a lot of weirdness in the sky until things really get revealed. A lot of us already know that things have happened, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And until they let that be known to everybody else, just um, again, watch the show, I guess. Um, yeah. Wow. Looking in the sky is a great way to start to see things um, because the hologram is not as strong as it was and it's, you know, I'm sure things will start to be revealed yeah. in the fairly near future. Yeah. Well, you know, and basically it's been said and we we've said it too, or we agree, nothing can stop what's hap what's coming. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point. And so she says, you know, everybody is doing dates and stuff, which we try not to do anymore, right. but is, can we really count on the solar event in March? It's already <laughs> happening. So right. I would say yes. Um, I've tapped into it over and over and over again, and I always get March. But right now, what's been happening since the end of December is the energy has been ramping up and ramping up. So the solar event is like the top of the mountain. So it's the highest peak of that solar. Um, it's information, basically, that's coming. So it's making some people extremely uncomfortable and it's making other people release old stuff. So like if you find yourself like, oh, I just want to cry for an hour or I'm really upset. I'm going to go in the bedroom and close the door and scream like there's things that are coming up that's old baggage that people are releasing right now. So that's part of it. She also said when I saw a video, she saw a video somewhere that on how to visualize your dragon, she said hers appeared uh, very fast. It's a very big white dragon with a great sense of humor. She says, can you, can you talk about them or do you see that too? Yeah, they have their own continent. Um, mm. Some are not totally here yet either, but there is a place where there are actual physical dragons on this outside outside of the uh dome. yeah yeah so they were definitely not put into the dome they're definitely outside um hmm. they're very benevolent um there's going to be eggs there's going to be dragons not every dragon will want to have a human contact right and not every human will have a dragon contact mm -hmm. so I do see your dragon is white, um, male, humorous, almost silly, uh, hmm. very ancient, actually. So I would say he's pushing probably 7,000. So a oh lot of God. dragons live to be, you know, like 10,000 years old or more. So he looks, he feels like he's pushing seven. Well, it's just like everything else, else that's going to come normal. We're going to be all different sizes, shapes, colors, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, the elementals, all those things that we thought were, fa were fairy tales are real. It's going to be just another day in the life. So yeah. um, she says she's always felt like she's kind of a mediator. You know, she's um, could, could see both sides of situations. Do you um, have any sense for what she'll be doing as time goes forward? I feel like instead of a mediator, she's going to be more like a translator. Oh. So she's going to understand what both sides need, what they're actually saying. Um, and she's going to be able to bridge that gap. But she's also not going to put up with um, somebody trying to skew what she's saying. Okay. Yeah. So. Um I think she's going to really truly know what's going on there. Yeah. Okay. So she'll be important in yeah. the scope of things for people. Um, well, thank you, Suzanne in Quebec. Yeah. Um, we're going to go to Sweden now. And I believe we, I spelled it Ganilla, Ganilla. 
Um, she's new to the channel. Um, she works with massage and Reiki. Mm -hmm. um, and she's just looking to, uh, you know, she hopes to work with people on a much deeper level um, and getting to know our clients better. Can you see if healing will be stronger and much more developed? And if that is her mission. It will be stronger and a whole lot more developed. Mm -hmm. I feel like she's going to teach children how to heal themselves. Okay. So that's going to be fun. Um, yeah, I mean, she is a healer and that's going to continue for quite a while, but as everything kind of works itself out and people are healing themselves. Right. I feel like she's just going to kind of have fun for a while. Like she's right. not going to be tied down to anything where she's in service. Um, yeah. yeah. And plus there's always going to be more things, things that we can't even need, imagine right now that we'll be learning yeah. as time goes on. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting. Gunilla. Um, good luck with that. Mm -hmm. um, Rowena is the next person and um, she's asking for your confirmation or to clarify what I'm about to say and advise her on how to move forward in her healing journey. So she says, I was born with psoriasis as a premature and blue baby. I had night terrors and prophetic dreams as a child, um, which I shut down myself at about 12 years old after a dream about orbs. I was told that I was a very old soul, which I, uh, um, by a gypsy woman, um, now that, and that was when she was in her thirties. So now she's in her fifties and she's decided that this is the decade she heals herself. So she started the meditation using crystals, Russian pyramid and pendulum, um, tapped, she tapped into something dark and approached, um, one of our, um, well, Antonio, Antonia for assistance, which was very helpful, but she's trying, she feels blocked. So she must've tapped into something that maybe bothered her. Yeah. Um, it's okay. Very, so okay. let's see here. The darkness, I feel like she came through a war. So it's almost like she shot into this existence mm. from a war that she was fighting. And mm. it's almost like it was unexpected. Um her her light body was still traumatized mm -hmm. so she came through and basically she was in trauma when she was born mm -hmm. um there is some sort of issue in the gut that was passed on from her mother mm -hmm. so i would work on you know gut health as well mm -hmm. for the psoriasis and what else the darkness i feel is you know what you haven't dealt with yet from that traumatic entrance and how you had to exit that last lifetime this feels like some sort of galactic thing and it was really really intense and i feel like there was something like almost like your whole ship blew up you know, like something quite bad happened. Mm -hmm. Um, and you brought that trauma into this new body. So you need to forgive yourself for not, for one thing, not taking a break. I feel like you almost didn't have a chance to, um, like in between, but also releasing the trauma is really important. And you may have some recollection of that fight well it sounds like she came in with uh, a lot of knowing or whatever as, as yeah. a child right and so a lot of that trauma caused her to shut that gift down when she was you know 12 13 years old yeah so by dealing with this um she might actually renew some magic in a good way right and you know you want to tap into what was that about yeah. um who was I during that time? Like you were an ET. I don't know what race it's not really coming in. So maybe it's one we don't know about or I don't know about. Um, but it feels very intense and um, stressful. Yeah. Yeah. So it was significant. 
So Rowena, Rowena, I hope that that at least gives you some, does clarify and confirm that for you. And you're able to um, figure out which route to take to mm -hmm. try to um, get more answers. So good luck with that. Um, Ann says, um, I have noticed recently my hearing has changed. Every sound is crisper. For example, for example, paper that rustles, chewing toast, even the sound of my own voice. Has my hearing been upgraded and will this also happen um, to my sight as well? As well? Yes. Hmm. And yes. <laughs> okay. So both. Um, the sight feels like it's several months out. So I, I feel like your gift has to do with your ears. So that's what's coming in next is that gift. And maybe it's clear, is that audience or audi audio? Anyway, it's going to come through. One of the clairs. One of the yeah, one of those clairs. Um, but you're going to hear things that you wouldn't never expect. Kind of the supernatural hearing. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And it has to be a transition somewhere. Um, she says, um, it uh, uh, okay, so a few years ago, this one incident happened to her. I was living in an apartment overlooking an estuary. And I looked that up. That's where the freshwater rivers meet the ocean. So, oh, okay. Estuary. Um, I was running late for work on this particular day and slipped on water in the car park. So where her carport or her car was falling mm -hmm. on my left arm. Okay. And I didn't, I didn't hit my head. Um, I got up and walked to my car feeling dazed and like I had broken my arm. I sat in the car until I felt okay and then I started to drive. Once I was driving the car, thought I was really um, not very good and I tried to reverse the car back you know, to park it, but I was unable to. And because I could see properly, I then saw flashing colored patterns in front of me. The only way I could um, move was to go forward. When I drove outside, there was no color. Everything looked like a silhouette of black and beige. When I finally got to work, I arrived on time. When everything that happened seemed to take forever. Uh, when I woke up the next day, my arm that had been so painful with that fall didn't hurt at all. So kind of was what really happened. And she got to work on time and everything else was this. I feel like her, um, her soul tribe I feel like they took a good portion of her consciousness mm. and that caused her to fall. And also as she was driving, like she's only half there. Yeah. So everything was looking really weird. Um, and then they realized that she had hurt herself. So they healed it during the night. That's what it feels like to me. Um, these feel like Andromedan beings. Yeah. Now, in general, can we say that, you know, our 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 beings that are watching us, I mean, they in our higher self protects us to a degree too, but most of them are pretty good about trying not to cause problems for you if you're like driving and doing things. They really are. Um, yeah. I feel like there was something urgent going on and her knowledge is a lot more extensive than what she knows. Okay. So they needed her at that moment. Yeah. Like they needed her consciousness to come and assist. Mm -hmm. And they definitely didn't mean to hurt her physical body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was kind of weird emergency situation. Interesting, interesting supernatural things going on with people. Oh, she yeah. says, <laughs> She says, I also, you know, living at that same property, looking out over that estuary on a misty morning, um, it was not quite light yet. And I saw what looked like a large army duck, which like an amphibious, you know, type vehicle on the water. Mm. It slowly disappeared as the morning became lighter. Did she see an army duck or did she see something else? I got like a UFO. Okay. <laughs> So it was like disguised, like that was the disguise. Um, and it was very small, like a one person. <laughs> oh, goodness. Not to be confused with the rubber duck. This ducky. is a big ET show, man. It was like yeah. all the ET stuff. Yeah. And then lastly, she has a toy poodle 
that's four years old. Um, she's had her from a pu since a puppy and they're very close. She's asking, is this um, puppy incar um, the incarnation of, of a stray dog that she had as a child? Same soul tribe same soul. for the dog, like same energy. Um, I almost feel like that one is still coming. Okay. It's lived lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Like it's been spreading joy, like is the words that come in, um, for that dog. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to get a second dog because they will absolutely love each other. Um, because they're a soul tribe and that's why the dog feels so familiar. Isn't it true that a lot of our pets, our domesticated pets, um, do kind of, you know, if they connect with us like that, they do kind of follow. I mean, you, they do throughout your whole lifetime. Yeah. Some continuously follow and some like go in and out and yeah. Let me, let me ask real briefly then what comes to mind is the poor, it uh, just, it can make me cry. So I won't linger on it, but the pet pets that aren't treated well and the pets that have bad, bad situations, um, obviously they wouldn't choose to come back to try to change or help them. I mean, they wouldn't anything? go back to that person. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. No. Ugh, so I suppose they need to, their soul needs lessons just like we do. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you, Anne. Mm -hmm. Um, Amy has, um, question. She basically, Amy had a previous question, um, that we answered. It was about whether she should breed the puppies or hold off, you know what I mean? And so she was oh, very, okay. you know, she does really love and care for them, the animals. Her question today is since she has a strong connection to the dogs and animals in general, um, have cats, she, they have cats and horses also. Um, can you see if I will continue to be part of the animals in the future? Um, I feel like um, I can help heal many people with the, with the puppies and wondered if I can she's heal. gonna do that and she's gonna also do something else um yeah it's not coming in exactly what that is mm -hmm. maybe kids I don't know well they go ahead and like kids but she's gonna do that but it's gonna be part of what of what she does, not the only thing she does. Yeah. yeah. So just, this is basically just preparing her, the way for her to um, naturally slide into something that's going to marry up with it beautifully. Uh, I don't know if it'll totally marry up. Like that's not coming in. Like it's going to be something she does. And then she's also going to do something else and they may marry and they may stay okay. separate. Okay. I don't know. I'm kind of sleepy. I think I'm not getting the whole. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's going to be a good thing. And yes, what you're doing right now is going to prepare you for the days ahead. Okay. So Jackie <laughs> um, in the UK um, says back in the day, the 1960s, she and her sister, they lived with their grand um, due to the death of their mother. One afternoon, um, she says, I rushed home from school, ran up the stairs in the house, and all of a sudden, I heard very clearly someone call my name. I turned around and ran down the stairs suddenly and realized that Gran wasn't home. She'd gone out for the day. So can you tell me who called my name? It was her consciousness. Oh. So it wasn't anything nefarious. Um, yeah, she was thinking about you. Okay. Yeah. So I don't get that. It was like a ghost being naughty or anything like that. Or it wasn't her mother that called her that, no. from beyond. Okay. Yeah. She she feels like she misses her real people, you know, longs to go back to whatever planet or wherever she came from. Do you get a sense of what, where that might be? We all have that. So, yeah. just so, you know, yeah. we all want to go home. Um, especially like throughout childhood and stuff but let's see where is she from feels like a purple planet um yeah. it feels like it's part of like similar or a sister uh species of the andromedans mm. but it's not andromeda so it's like mm. i don't know 
maybe not even in the sol same solar system, but definitely in the same galaxy. Mm -hmm. um, they feel very benevolent, these beings, very kind. Everything kind of is a little slow and steady and every everybody's happy with each other. The egos really don't live there. So yeah, I mean, it would be a great place. No wonder to you want to go back. Yeah. No you want to go back. <laughs> so, well, thank you for the questions, Jackie. Yeah. Um, we go to Katie, and she was um, she had had a session with you, you know, a little while ago, which was amazing. And she said she was so excited she forgot to ask what her subconscious blocks were. And I'm, you know, I'm going to tell her that that's something that is, just takes too much. That's not going to be put on the air for for something like this. That's more of a thing that you yeah. do one on one. So maybe um, somebody can help you with that. Um, she wanted to ask. Um, who built the ancient site of, I um, don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, Ganung Padang, Ganung Padang. It's in Java, Indonesia. So um, who built that ancient site and what you lies know, underneath? I answered this before. I want to kind of look at it. Okay, so we're going to share those so that, oh. Yeah. On. I think she uh, downloaded the picture. I think I of downloaded them, yeah. Okay. In Java, Indonesia, this ancient site called Ganung Padang. I'm sure I butchered that, but the question is what lies beneath, underneath of it? Yeah, okay. Who built it? So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay. Can you see that, Julianne? I can. Yeah. Okay, so I want to start with this picture. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm getting there's more than one set of beings that created that. Mm -hmm. This was a very advanced group, um, almost ET like. So I'm not actually getting it was Anunnaki. I feel like it was another visiting ET group and. They actually feel nicer to me, like they weren't interfering with humans as much. Mm -hmm. They didn't stay a tremendous amount of time. Um, and then this feels more, it feels more like human to mm -hmm. me. So it feels like native beings from earth. And it's like they went ahead and they took over the site and they started doing other things with it. Okay. Um, but I had so to look at it to know because I am getting sleepy. Yeah, and it probably is quite ancient. Yeah, I think it's very ancient. Yeah. Um, and then, okay. Go ahead. And well, and then we we did uh, look at the herd in McDonald Islands, which right. she says are a sub Antarctic island group. Um, you know west uh southwest of australia is there something there that's being hid hidden from us because no people are allowed to to go there and it's also difficult to get to or that yeah. people aren't there's busy. a lot underground it's like a, a transition point for nefarious behavior um i feel like there's more than one place you could go from there hmm. Uh, and it's definitely not, they want people away from there. They don't want them to know what they're doing. So well, in the future, it will be opened up. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say train systems go into that area? Definitely. I get a definite on that one. Yeah. 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 Those penguins another... have no idea what lies away, uh, lies next to them. <laughs> no, the penguins have no idea. Um, and just one last part to her um, question, she, because um, we do have new viewers and stuff, she just, about the pork, she says she can't find the old video that talks about why not to eat it, just a quick, every once in a while we have to do this. Yeah, so DNA wise, it is related to humanity. So that's why it's been seen. The pigs were created. They were not uh, a normal species of animal, right? 
Yeah, they were created, and um, I think the boar, the wild boar, was part of the creation. Um, but yeah, and that was the grays. Yeah, that was the grays. The naughty, naughty boys or people, mm -hmm. robots, robotics. Yeah, naughty, mm. naughty. Yeah, so they're just that's why. Why do you think that that um, we're so compatible? So that when they have heart surgeries, they use pig valves. So yeah. just think on that for a moment. <laughs> yeah, so. I was nauseated for the whole day when I tapped into that. I was like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we appreciate all of your um, questions and um, kind of time is running short for us here today. Um, but I do want to also say, um, if you haven't really, if you have questions about contact information, if you hit the show more or the drop down under the video, it should have all the information you need. But email the questions to um, askhoneyseagolden at gmail.com. That's what the address is. And um, I, we, we love your comments, but if you're trying to ask questions in the comments, you know, we might see them, but we don't take note of, you know, they're not going to be answered in that yeah, format. Yeah, it's too hard right. at this point. So, yeah. but. But we do appreciate that. Yeah, we really appreciate you guys. So. We're learning a lot. Everybody's learning a lot from you all. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank, thank you so you. much. Bye.